How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, we are talking about the recent announcement that Crucible of War is officially out of print. To the surprise of some people, I guess. Um, it's a little bit surprising to me that it was Crucible of War, but not surprising to me at all that a set is out of print. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about my opinions on it and, um, you know, basically my overall thoughts. It's a very interesting thing and it's one of those things where I feel like, you know, it's worth talking about. I don't want to make videos about every little bit of news that comes out and, and chase all of these, like, clickbaity headlines. Um, there's a reason why I didn't cover the, the whole like Rudy thing also because that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted people to, you know, talk about it and get angry about it. But um, I think this one is worth talking about and worth discussing. I'm not saying that the Rudy thing wasn't worth talking about. I'm just saying that that was his goal. He just wanted everyone to talk about it. So let's talk about the out of print crucible of war. Am I surprised that a set went out of print? No, not at all. I've never believed that Unlimited was actually unlimited. Um, it, that's just because of logistical reasons, right? There are only a finite number of sets they can have in print because one, Legend Story Studios is an indie company. They are not Hasbro. They are a smaller indie company, even though Flesh and Blood is successful. It's very, very unfeasible to have like, you know, 15 sets in print. You know, we're gonna have like 15 sets eventually, right? And do you really think that they're going to have 15 sets in print and shipping out all of these things? Keep in mind that they don't just print like, you know, a couple booster boxes, a couple hundred booster boxes. They make these orders in massive, massive bulk quantities. Talk to anyone who's had any dealings with Cardamundi. The more you make, the less it costs to actively make that. And so a lot of these companies just make absolutely massive bulk orders of their stuff. And you're not going to be able to do that with like 15 sets, right? And no one's going to want to buy that much, you know, you know, in like two years. Who's going to want to buy like a ton of Arcane Rising or whatever? Even if like one of the cards, Command and Conquer, is like still heavily played, and I'm pretty sure it will be. Like, I don't see just all of these sets selling like a ton in like two years. So... That is just something that was never a thing for me. I never thought that they would just have unlimited, literally unlimited, right? I knew that they would eventually go out of print. And it's something that James has actually talked about. James White, the creator of Flesh and Blood, the CEO of Legend Story Studios. I'm pretty sure he talked about this in an interview with Team Covenant. They talked about this and he did say that sets would eventually go out of print. So this should not be news to people. Um, and he also said that they are very willing to reprint cards to help sustain the market and sustain new players into the game. So I'm gonna say that I do believe there are gonna be some immediate ramifications. I've already seen a lot of negative negativity. People are saying the game is now way too expensive. I mean, come on. Yes, Crucible of War will go up in price. The singles will go up in price and they will probably be way too expensive to be honest, but Welcome to Wraith is still really cheap right now. Arcane Rising is still really cheap right now. Monarch is still really cheap right now. And first edition Tales of Aria is still really cheap. You can get it for like 115 bucks a box and you can get the other boxes that I mentioned for like 60 bucks. So that that's not what's gonna make it expensive. It's obviously gonna be the Crucible of War stuff. And I do think that is a problem, probably just a short-term problem for now. I guess it's gonna really, be determinate on how many of these cards are going to be reprinted and how and, and which ones I guess you could say. I also think that this is coming at a very very interesting time. We don't have the name of the next set yet and I would bet money, I would bet money that the next set is going to be a supplemental set. It's going to be very interesting to see if any of these cards get reprinted in that supplemental set. And that would actually make a lot of sense to me, right? If they're discontinuing this set and just gonna reprint some of the other ones in the next set, that does make a lot of sense, though I would not be surprised if it was not that, if it was just all completely new stuff in the next supplemental set. But it does kind of make sense, right? If they're discontinuing Crucible now and the next set's gonna be supplemental, it, it, it does make sense to kind of just keep things, keep things rolling. And I do think that's kind of the intent here. And I do think 
because of the timing of this, I think we're going to be getting an announcement about the next set sometime soon. Probably not, hmm, probably not like really soon, but I would bet in the next, hmm, I'm probably going to be wrong here. I'm going to bet in the next like month or so. That, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> next month or so. Uh, I guess that's too, too easy of a bet. A couple weeks. Let's say a couple weeks. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very interesting thing. I do think obviously Crucible of War prices are going to go up, especially for staple cards. Um, it is going to increase the price of the decks that use those cards, but not every deck uses them. There are some key staples, like some of the equipment, Bloodsheath Skeleta, Courage of Blade Hold. There's like um, Remorseless for Rangers, a staple card. And yeah, I mean, it, it is going to be what it is for a little while and prices of those decks that use them are going to go up. It's not going to increase the price of literally every single deck because not every single deck uses cards from Crucible of War. In my Lexi deck, I do use three uh, Remorseless and three of the um, Fane Death, but in a lot of my other decks, I don't really use all that many cards from Crucible of War. So yeah, it, it's, it's a really tricky thing. Um, I'm not surprised, basically. This is the bottom line. I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. Um, like I said, James literally said, that unlimited wasn't going to be literally unlimited, right? He he specifically said that there will be um, a time where they just stop printing it. So one of the things I, I want to be like very transparent here. I looking at it right over there I'm on my studio desk. I have five boxes of Welcome to Wraith, three of Arcane Rising. I had four. I opened it on what opened up one of them for the uh, for the um, two year anniversary event, and I have four boxes of Monarch. Me, as a player, and as kind of a collector, I want to have just boxes available so I can do stuff with them, right? As a content creator, if I want to like crack open a box for whatever reason, I have them available. Or, better yet, if I can have friends over to play Flesh and Blood to draft stuff, I want to have that available. I didn't say I had any Crucible of War, which is kind of a bummer because I was really considering buying some in the last couple days. And well, now it's really expensive. I would recommend if you can get some, you should probably pick them up. Um, yeah, uh, Channel Fireball is basically cleaned out. I actually bought six boxes today um, for $90 after I saw this announcement and I was like, oh dude, I need to get some just to have, you know, just to have some in case I want to use it for the channel or for, for whatever. And now is probably the best time. So with that said, if you like any of the old sets, if you like Welcome to Wraith, if you like Arcane Rising, it might be a good time to pick them up, especially if you can get them for cheap, because they're not going to be around forever. Um, and you might regret just not having them in the future. The way I think about it, you know, is what I regret, do, do I want this in the future, right? Is this something that I want in the future or I will want and can I afford it now? And if I can and I do want it, then might as well just, might as well just get it, right? For me, I am a collector of flesh and blood. I like my cold foils, but I'm not an investor in flesh and blood. I never buy anything with the intent of selling it at a profit. I want the things to have because I like the things. And this is how I, this is my mindset with a lot of the, the card games that I play. You know, I buy them because I like them. And just so happens, a lot of the stuff that I like becomes very expensive because either they're very good or very rare. And um, yeah, for, as a collector, I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd rather have, hmm. This is a really tricky situation. I was gonna say I'd rather have players the ability to just have all the cards, but that's part of being a trading card game, right? There, there's gonna be a point where you just can't buy all the cards for super cheap. That's just part of being a trading card game. I really hope, one of my real, one of my big hopes here is that we do see more reprints in future sets. I would like to see the reprints kind of scattered in. I think that would be kind of cool is if we kind of like peppered them into sets, like, um, Say, for example, the next set has Wizard, right? And then we see some of the cool Wizard cards from Crucible of War. Maybe like one or two of them. Not a lot of them, but maybe like one or two of the Majestics or something like that. I think that could be cool, like, just to kind of pepper them in a little bit. Maybe just like one. Not, not, not too many of them, because you still want the new sets to feel very new, right? And that's, that's a tricky thing with this kind of stuff. I don't, I don't think they should reprint too many of them into new sets, because new sets should definitely stand out right and they should be their own thing without being uh resting on the laurels of other sets but i think you can still pepper some cool stuff in 
to every, you know, every every couple sets or so. Other games do this too. You know, Magic does this. They put reprints in every now and then. They typically don't put a lot of high value reprints in. Usually Magic reprints are like, we printed Giant Spider again or whatever, right? It's not like they're like, here's a, here's some more fetch lands. That's, that's a very rare occasion for Magic. But we've seen them put the tunic in Crucible of War. We probably won't see the tunic for a while if I had to guess. Maybe a reprint of the Arcanite Skullcap? Hmm, maybe. But, man, you know, one thing One thing that is very interesting, though, is, um, it, just, it just occurred to me, um, Fabled cards, right? Fabled cards are interesting because they're not usually required in your deck for it to be a top-tier competitive deck. There are some decks that obviously run some, like the Great Library of Solana, and, you know, some decks get a little bit of benefit out of them. Like, I know Bravo, I've seen some Bravo players play with Heart of Fiendel. Um, Eye of Fidia is fantastic in Wizard, and obviously the Arknight Shard is a Viscerai specialization, so that one's very specific to a hero. But I don't know if they will reprint Fabled. If you know, and they've said something, because I don't remember if they have or not, or if this is just something that people have said, um, but with, without confirmation, if they will reprint Fabled cards in future sets, I have a feeling that they won't. Um, so I think Fabled cards could be one of those kind of sticking points where things could get a little, a little crazy, right? A, a little crazy. Um, I just hope, I just hope that the overall perception of this isn't back to like flesh and blood is too expensive because it is kind of expensive, but like I said, man, like welcome to Wraith is still like 50 or 60 bucks a box. So is Arcane Rising. So is Monarch. Like a lot of the sets are still very, very cheap. They're not going to be cheap forever. When these sets go out of print, it's going to be the same thing. It's still going to be the same thing. Um, so there's a ton of unlimited out there right now. And like I said, if, if you like these sets and you think you're ever going to want them, now is going to be a good time to do it. I'm not an investor. Like I said, I don't buy these to flip. I don't know if they're going to be worth a lot of money in the future. You know, they could go out of print and then not go up. Probably not, but they, they could, right? That's what I'm saying. But I'm approaching this from someone who loves the game, who in the future will want to, you know, experience these products again. And so if that's something that you want to do, I highly recommend picking them up. You can go and check out Channel Fireball. You can use my affiliate code ROGUE at checkout and goes and support me. Or there's tons of other, you know, mom and pop shops, uh, smaller, um, smaller uh, online stores that have stuff. There's, you know, Fab Foundry, there's Deck Edge, uh, there's t uh, Fab TCG cards for singles. Like, go out there and, you know, support some of these folks and, um, you know, pick some stuff up if you've just kind of been waiting on it. Because I think this is going to give a lot of people a kick in the pants. Maybe maybe wait a little bit because there might be a little bit of FOMO initially. Once again, not an investor. I don't know a lot about the finances and stuff or, hmm, or do I? But no, 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 no. That's not a focus here. And that's not, I do think about it, but it's not something that I really want to focus. I really want the narrative of this channel. <laughs> this is something you might've already noticed. I, to be on gameplay, to be on card interactions, that kind of stuff. I'll leave the finance to people who care about it more. I care about the gameplay and I care about the cards being, I do care about the cards being affordable to people because, you know, as someone who is a player, I consider myself a player first and foremost and a collector, <clears throat> collector second. I do want decks to be reasonable for people. I guess the, the how reasonable varies from person to person. Me, someone who's coming from magic, you know, reasonable for a top tier deck is like a couple hundred bucks. And, you know, for flesh and blood, that's definitely attainable. It's going to be more expensive now for sure. Um, but once you've acquired some of those key legendaries, the making new decks is actually not very expensive at all. Like once you have like a tunic and like a skull cap, like getting other stuff isn't really that expensive. There is some, you know, other legendaries if you really need like a cold foil or whatever can get expensive. But a lot of the Majestics, with some exceptions, you know, Command and Conquer and Enlightened Strike, um, a lot of them not too bad, not too bad. So this is a very rambly video. This is going on for way longer than I, ta than I thought. We're, we're talking about a lot, of, a lot of stuff here I didn't intend on talking about. But um, yeah, those, those are basically basically my thoughts, right? The, the, the points here, I'm not surprised. I'm a little surprised that it's Crucible of War, but kind of not really, kind of not. 
like I said, it, it does make sense if the next set is supplemental that they're discontinuing this one and then they're gonna be rolling out the next one. That does make sense and the timing makes sense. And if they're gonna follow this up with an announcement of the next supplemental set, uh, it just all makes sense to me. And you know, I still trust in the folks at Legend Story Studios. They're very smart people. Um, but you know, keep in mind, they're still an indie company and it is very unsustainable to have a ton of sets in print at the same time. Like, once again, they're not Hasbro. They cannot afford this, especially because you need to place bulk orders for it to be like, you know, affordable for them as a company. With the next set coming out, it's gonna be six sets, man. Six sets in print at the same time is kind of crazy. Like, what's the maximum number of sets that Magic has in print at a time? Uh, it can't be much more than six, right? And then we're gonna get to a point next year. So say we have three more sets next year. That's what, eight? Eight sets in print? And then the year after that, you know, three more sets. We have 11 sets in print. Like, that's absurd. That is actually absurd. So yeah, not surprised. Um, anyone who's been paying attention, who watched interviews with James White would also not be surprised. He's literally said, he's literally said it before. Um, but uh, it being Crucible of War is interesting. Uh, definitely, definitely interesting. It also means you have time to still pick up some Welcome to Wraith, Arcane Rising, or Monarch if you want to. If you want to. Or you just, you know, buy the singles, have all the play sets. I mean, once again, for me as a player, I'll, I'll do a whole video about collecting, by the way. But for me as a player, I just want a full play set of everything so I can just make whatever deck I want, right? If I want to, if I see a deck and I'm like, oh, that looks really fun, I can just make it, right? So that's my goal. That is my goal as a player. And as a content creator too, when I open up Flesh and Blood product, my goal is just to get a play set of everything, right? So any duplicate legendaries I get, I immediately just say is like, I'm not like, oh, this is bank I can just sell. This is like, I need to trade this to get the other cards that I'm missing. Um, that, that's my mentality when, when coming into this and, and approaching this. So I hope you like this video. It's really rambly. I don't really talk a lot about these kind of subjects and topics. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I know folks are going to be angry that it's going to be more expensive. I, I feel you, you know, like I don't, I don't have infinite money, dude. I'm not, I'm not Rudy. I don't, I don't, I'm not rich. Right. Um, like I'll be super honest here. There's a lot of people talking about like YouTube and Twitch, like finances. I used to work retail. I was a, I was a manager in retail, but I still did not get paid very much. Right. Um, less than $20 an hour. Let me put it that. And now, as a full-time YouTuber and Channel Fireball um, sponsoree, I make a little bit more than that now. <laughs> that's, that's how it is. So I am not a rich person. So I understand, I feel you when you say that like, it's too expensive. I understand, like I, I super understand. A lot of the stuff I, I buy um, with my extra, my extra disposable income, I like put it towards the channel, right? A lot of this stuff is like, I buy this for the channel um, so it, you know I can make videos, I can make more videos. So once again, <laughs> this is long and rambly. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Very, very interesting times. Um, I didn't think I had much to say about this, but apparently, apparently I did. Thank you so much for watching. If you are going to be at the Dallas-Fort Worth calling event, come and say hi to me, because I will be there doing coverage. I'm also gonna be at Orlando. So if you're going to Orlando, come and say hi to me that there as well. That one's gonna be a little different. I'll maybe talk about that in the future, but um, you'll definitely see me in the coverage booth at, at some point. Well, also in, also in Dallas-Fort Worth, but also after that at some point too. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you next time.